Within your will, O Lord, all things are established, and there is none that can resist your will. For you have made all things, the heaven and earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven. You are the Lord of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let's take a moment to call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Savior of the world. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, you heard of my former way of life in Judaism and how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it and progressed in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my race, since I was even more a zealot for my ancestral traditions. But when he, who from my mother's womb had set me apart and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him to the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. Rather, I went to Arabia and then returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to confer with Cephas and remained with him for 15 days. But I did not see any other of the apostles, only James, the brother of the Lord. As to what I am writing to you, behold, before God, I am not lying. Then I went to the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown personally to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only kept hearing that the one who was once persecuting us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. So they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize with all my ways. You are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Truly you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. My soul also you know full well nor was my name unknown to you when I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Blessed are those who hear the word of the Lord and observe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. As we hear this gospel, it's worth kind of keeping in mind, and this is something I think we struggle with with a lot of gospels, is like hearing this as a very human conversation, a very human interaction. I think we often assume that when Jesus says something, he's by nature saying it very seriously and kind of like scolding someone all the time. But of course, that's that's not at all the case. He, he kind of had a lot of fun with people. You think of Nathaniel, you know, he said, here's a man with no guile. Uh, you know, he always was able to, to kind of uh, be friendly with friends. And uh, what that's kind of what's unique about Martha and Mary. You know, they, there is a miracle involved in their family story, but it's with their bro- brother Lazarus, who had died and he bro- brought back from the dead. His interactions with Martha and Mary are not really what we would call ministerial in nature. You know, a lot of people that he interacts with, he has some parable to tell, or he's got some message to give, or simply his presence in the case of uh, tax collectors and uh, Pharisees, you know, in those dining interactions, he's always got something to uh, to offer. But this scene is not one where he's come to Martha and Mary to make a point. He's just there to visit Martha and Mary because they're they're dear friends of his. And so, likewise, I think there's kind of like we we would be okay reading a kind of a teasing note about Martha's, you know, saying to Jesus, saying, you know, my sister is just sitting here. Could you please ask her to help me? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. You could kind of picture that in any kind of family and friend situation where one person is running around doing all the work and the other person is just kind of sitting there. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of us identify in this kind of binary, you know, we may be Martha's where we're, if you have hospitality, you know, you have someone over, you always want to be attentive to them and, and running around taking care of them. I know I identify that way. I preached that about my mother when she died, you know, it was like I can just picture her up there, you know, making a sandwich for Peter and Mary Magdalene and the apostles and uh, having a hard time just sitting down. And I know I've preached this message before in another context, but I don't think it can can be said enough that I think Jesus wants to remind us all the time that as much as he loves us, right, and and, and Jesus does love us, I I never want to let go of that, that's the gospel, Um, he also likes us, you know, and that's that's a thought that I admit I, I, I didn't hear a lot when I was growing up, that Jesus actually likes us and delights in us and delights in our presence. The idea being that we don't always have to be kind of proving ourselves all the time. We don't need to be scurrying around, though it's not like he's, he's not scolding Martha either because Martha's being Martha. That's who she is. And he delights in that too, no doubt. But it's like part, that's like part of the reason, his delight in who Martha is, that he just wants to say, hey, Martha, just come sit here for a while. You know, sit with, sit with Mary, sit with me. Let's, let's just be together. Um, because ultimately, for all of our theologizing about what eternal life in the kingdom will be, you know, it is just kind of being with Jesus and with each other and, and being in the joy uh, of having the pleasure of each other's company. Uh, and so I hope that's something that we can all take with us today, that, you know, uh, whether we're in prayer, whether we're here at Mass, just to understand that Jesus is not just, uh, you know, loving us in this uh, of course, it's a, a radical, self-giving way. He also delights in us. He also actually wants to 
to hang out with us and, and, and what a, an important and special thought is uh, that is to, to carry with us, I think. Let's stand and bring our loving prayers to a Father. We pray for the church, uh, that we may have hope and and joy that our our Lord does indeed love us, and that we may share that message with others. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for those who lead us in our society, and for uh, those who will lead us, that they may do so in a way that protects the dignity and life of all people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are ill, for all those who suffer from, uh, in mind and body or spirit, that they would have the, the comfort and the consolation of the Lord's presence. We pray also for those who suffer from coronavirus and for all those who care for them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died, for all those who have gone before us in faith, uh, that they may see the face of the Lord. We pray also for those who mourn and those who are in grief. We pray to the Lord. And today we pray for the intention of this Mass for the repose of Monica Smith. We pray to the Lord. And let's take a moment to call to mind prayers in our own hearts that we'd like to bring before the Lord today. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, we ask you would hear these prayers, for we make all of them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, who become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.